Hello everyone and welcome back. Till the previous session, we have completed the programmer's view of 8085. In other words, we studied about all the different registers which are accessible to the programmers. Now as promised from this session onwards, we are going to learn about the data transfer between the 8085 microprocessor and the memory. So without any further ado, let's get to learning. Coming to the topic that we are going to cover in this session, today we will learn about the organization of the 8085 microprocessor and the memory associated with it. Well, to be precise, we will discuss about all the different pins of 8085 and the memory which are needed for the data transfer. Additionally, we will also talk about the components of the 8085 microprocessor which is needed for the same. Now we already have seen all the 40 pins of the 8085 microprocessor, haven't we? Now since we are about to learn about data transfer, can you figure out which are the specific pins that we will be requiring at first? We are going to learn about data transfer, so the data bus is a must. That is, pin number 12 to 19 from AD0 to AD7. Apart from that, the microprocessor for the data transfer is going to communicate with the memory. And in order to access the memory locations, we will be needing the address bus. Now, since we already have included the pins 12 to 19, that means we have included the lower order address bus. But that won't be enough. We will also need the higher order address bus, that is, pins 21 till 28 or A8 to A15. Now, apart from these two sets of pins, we will also need the output pin number 30, that is ALE. And what's the reason for that? Since in case of 8085, the pins 12 to 19 are multiplexed. That is, they can work as both, either a part of the address bus or the entire data bus. So, to specify whether they are carrying the data or the address, we need the output pin number 30, that is ALE. Now, in the organization, we are not going to have all the 40 pins of the 8085 microprocessor. Rather, in this particular block diagram, we will only use the pins which are necessary for this kind of organization. So, let's have them. We will have the address lines, also the data lines. And in order to differentiate whether these bus are carrying data or address, we will need the ALE pin. So these are all the necessary pins of 8085 microprocessor. Now in the previous session itself, we were introduced to the memory which is associated to the 8085 microprocessor. And we have also learned in order to address the memory locations, we use the hex codes 40 still 4Fs. Now coming back to our 8085 microprocessor, the pins A15 to A8, these are specifically the higher order address bus. That is, they are going to be unidirectional. On the other hand, due to the multiplex section for AD7 to AD0, these channels are actually bidirectional. Well, to be precise, for addresses, it has to be unidirectional, that is pointing towards the memory only. However, since we will also be dealing with data through these bus only, that's why it is bidirectional. Now think about it. For the memory, the entire address which is coming from the microprocessor is divided into two different sets of channels. Therefore, this is not the complete view of the memory. Within the memory, we will also need something called the address decoder, which will help the memory find the exact address to which the 8085 microprocessor is willing to communicate with. Now think about it. These are the address buses coming out from 8085 microprocessor. Now in order to communicate with the memory, specifically a particular memory location within the memory, the microprocessor will have to load the address on this bus from somewhere. Now for that, the microprocessor will make use of a component which it already has. If you remember, when we were learning about the registers of 8085 microprocessor, we also came across the registers which are inaccessible to the programmers. From that list, 
the memory address register, which is also a 16-bit register, is going to help us in this. So let's have the MAR within the 8085 microprocessor. And say, the microprocessor wants to communicate with the memory location F820. Therefore, within the memory address register, the address F820 will be loaded at first. Now, before I show you how it is loaded on the address channels, let me remind you one thing regarding the memory. If you remember, since 8085 microprocessor is an 8 bit microprocessor, that is, it can work on 8 bits of data, due to that reason, the associated memory is also constructed in such a way that every memory location is of 8 bits. Now, within the memory, all the bits of all the different locations are connected to the data channel of the memory and these are called D0 to D7. Now, as you can notice, these are bidirectional channels which are in turn connected with the AD7 to AD0 of 8085 microprocessor. Now, let me show you one prominent difference between the microprocessor and the memory. For the microprocessor, we are using the same lower order address bus as the data bus. However, for the memory, we have got different sets of address lines and different sets of data lines. Interesting, right? Now, since in case of 8085 microprocessor, the lower order address bus and the data bus are multiplexed together, therefore, we need the functionality of ALE. And we already know, when the ALE is 1, that is high, AD7 to AD0 actually carries the lower order bits of the address bus. That is, all the pins from AD0 till A15 together will carry the entire address of the memory location with which the 8085 microprocessor wants to communicate. On the other hand, when ALE is 0, that is low, as I have highlighted D7 to D0, this multiplexed channel will be working as the data bus. Now, let me show you how this address F820 will be loaded on the bus. Notice, this is a 16-bit address. And since we are dealing in hexadecimal, that's why we have got four digits of hexadecimal. Now, F8 is actually the higher order 8 bits. So, this will be loaded on the channel A15 to A8. On the other hand, 2.0 is the lower order 8 bits. So, this is going to be loaded in AD7 to AD0. Now, currently, this bus is carrying the lower order bits of the address. So, ALE is going to be enabled. Notice, the latch for now will hold the address. Now, we need to learn about another required component for the data transfer. If you remember in the previous session when we were learning about the program counter register, we actually created a program for two's complement. Using that program from a particular memory location, we were carrying a data into the accumulator register of 8085 so that we could perform some kind of operations on it. So basically, whenever a data is to be operated on, the microprocessor will need accumulator so that it can perform the required operations on the data. Similarly, here also we will need the accumulator register, so that the data which will be brought from the memory location can be placed within this register. Now, this is pretty much the organization. However, I believe there is a question which should be answered. And what's the question? For now, whenever we are sending the data to zero, that is the lower order address bits, through the channel 87 to 80 to the address decoder, don't you think this particular data, since this channel is a bidirectional one, could have been placed within the memory location via D7 to D0? It could have happened, right? But let me tell you, it doesn't happen. And why is that? The reason is the mechanism of this particular channel. This bus, that is the data bus of the memory, which is connected to AD7 to AD0 from here, this is constructed using something called the tri-state buffer. As you can see, 
Usually the buffers have one input and one output. However, in this particular case, it has got two input lines. And the functionality of the second input line is, this controls a switch within the buffer. Let me explain you how it works. If through the second input line we feed zero, since it is a bubbled input, within the circuit it will be treated as one, and that will connect the switch. And since the switch is connected, so in the input end if we feed zero, since it is a buffer only, at the output we will get zero. Or else if we feed one, at the output we will also get one. However, if through the second input we feed 1, since it is bubbled, it will be treated as 0 within the circuit, so it will disconnect the switch. Now notice, if we either feed 0 or 1, since the switch is disconnected, we will not receive anything at the output end. This is known as high impedance. Now, impedance is actually the noun form of the verb impede which means to obstruct the progress of something or to make something more difficult or to prevent something from happening. Here, since the entire circuit is being disconnected through this switch, we are having high impedance. So clearly, since the switch is disconnected, due to high impedance, we won't receive anything at the output end. And this is how these channels are built. Whenever we are sending the low order bits via 87 to 80, the tri state buffer of this particular connection are given the value 1 so that the data can flow in this direction only, not via this channel. So, this is pretty much the organization between the 8085 microprocessor and the memory. Now, let's say within the memory location F820. We have got the data 10011010. How we are going to bring that data within the accumulator register? That we will learn in the next session. So, in this session, we cover the topic organization of the 8085 microprocessor and memory. Do remember, in case of 8085 microprocessor, both the address and the data bus are multiplexed. Basically, we are talking about 80 to 87. However, for the associated memory, there are two different sets of channels. That is, it has single address bus, which will be incoming from the 8085 microprocessor, and it has got bidirectional data bus, which are named as D0 to D7. Additionally, for 8085 microprocessor, for the data transfer, we will mainly need the pins, all the address and the data bus, and the address latch enabled. Apart from that, we will also need the registers, MAR, that is memory address register, which if you remember, are inaccessible to the programmers. However, we will also need a register which is accessible to the programmers, that is, the accumulator register. All right, people, that will be all for this session. In the next session, we are going to learn how to read from the memory, that is, how the 8085 microprocessor is going to bring the data from a particular memory location within the accumulator register. So, I hope to see you in the next one. Thank you all for watching.